Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to discuss how to use configurations in ASP.NET Core and what are the different ways of accessing configuration. So for doing that, I'm going to create a new ASP.NET Core web application and I'm going to name it as config.demo. And I'm going to just select a standard SP.NET Core 3.1 and an API application. Now, once the project is created, I want to show you that by default, appsettings.json and appsetting.development.json, these two are created for us. Now, in the program.cs, we have this call called create default builder. Now, if you look into the definition of create default builder, it does the following thing it actually loads the configuration with the environment prefix. So as you can see that it already goes and figures out appsetting.json and then also it loads the appsetting.environment.json config. So it keeps loading this config. Apart from that, it loads environment variables and then finally it loads anything passed to the arguments but arguments are mainly used for replacement value and I'm going to show all of these one by one. So first we already have a app setting .json and app setting development .json. In my project properties for debugging the ASP.NET Core environment is already set as development and this is the value the ASP.NET Core underscore environment environment variable is the one which is used by the .NET Core to figuring out which app setting JSON to pick it up from. When we create a production build, we of course set it up as production. And if we have a QA environment or some other environment, we have to give appropriate environment variable name. And this can all can be done in Docker. I'm going to show in another video how to set this in Docker, but for running locally, this is where it is all set up. Now, if I go to app setting development, I can create my own configuration here. So let's start creating a configuration. And let's say this is a configuration for version so I say version and say 1.0 so that's a version configuration and let's create another configuration which is a multi-level configuration it might be settings and for settings I can have multi-level and inside of settings I can have database and let's say the database value is SQL so these are the couple of settings. Now let's see how we can read these settings and how we can pass it to the controller. So first let's go into startup. In the startup, the .NET framework itself passes the I configuration. So as a part of this create default builder, when the configuration settings are loaded, the I configuration object is created, it is automatically passed on to the constructor of startup. And also, as you can see, the create default builder takes the arguments which are coming from the main method and the reason for this as I mentioned earlier this can be used to overwrite some of the configuration values now if I go back to startup here what we can do is we can say there are a couple of ways to extract the value so first one is let's say var we have two things one is a version and the settings so we can say version is equal to configuration dot get value string and then version, which is the key. That's one way. The second way is if we're trying to get the database value, then we can say configuration of, and here the key is going to be setting database. This is another way of accessing is using the indexer. We can use the same setting with the get value as well. Now, if I do a console.write line, and print out the version, print out the DB. And if I run the application now, we'll see both of them showing up. And you can see version 1.0 and SQL both are showing up as expected. So now if we want to get the version into the controller, how we can do that. So first let me get rid of this code. And let me just get rid of this code. And here instead of enumerable, I'll just keep a string. So let's say we want to get the version number. So what we can do is we can inject a string version and we can declare as a field and here we can say return version 
And here what we can do is we can do a services dot add singleton and just we can add a version here. And if we do that, it will automatically configure a string and set its value as version. Now the problem with that is anywhere we inject any string is going to give the version value. That's a problem. So doing it this way is kind of limits us to only one string value. But let me run this and show that we can see the version now in the output of the service. So the service runs, we get the version here. So this is how string can work. Now let's say we another configuration and let's say this configuration is named custom. And then there is a key here called config value. And the value for this is custom configuration. Now what we can do is we can create a class called custom. And then inside this custom, we can have a string property. Config value. Now if we go to startup, what we can do is we can do var custom and then what we can do is configuration dot get section and here we can provide this custom as the section and then we can do a bind and it is going to bind the configuration values to the object we pass here which is the custom so now if we try to inject this custom into this controller so we say And here, instead of version, we can say custom dot config value as a return. And also, we need to add it to the dependency injection container. So we can add this to dependency injection container. So once we do that, if I run now, I should be able to see the custom configuration in the output. And I see the custom configuration showing up. Now, this is a little bit tedious, but this kind of getting through binding is useful if we want to use this configuration somewhere here and we want to deal with it. But if we just want to add it to the dependency injection container, we don't need any of this. All we have to do is we can say, services dot configure and we can pass the type and the section name so you can see that the configure takes the section name and the configuration so that's all we need to pass the other way of doing it is also through configuration dot get section so we can even do it this way so we can pass the section name like this. So these are the two options of doing the configure. And once we configure, what we can do is here, instead of custom directly, we have to take I option. And once we do that, let me go and change it here also. And then once we do that, we, we can do the option dot value and then dot config value. So now if I run this application, I'm going to see the same output as before. But this time I don't have to do the binding or anything. It will automatically be bound based on the configuration section. So this is another way of doing it. As I have shown, these are like few ways of getting configuration as well as setting it to dependency injection container. Now the next thing I wanted to show is by default the environment variables that we have are automatically available in the configuration. So here if I do console dot right line and if I try to print uh, environment variable. So let me do one thing. Let me go here in the properties environment variable and let's add one. So let's name it as test env and for the value is test test environment variable let's put some underscore in between because it's an environment variable so let's at least follow some standard and let's save this one now if we go and try to access if we do a configuration of test environment it is going to print out the test environment value that we just added so if i run this see that the test environment variable is printed out as expected the next thing is let's say we want to add our custom json configuration now how would we achieve that so for that what we can do is let's first add a new item and for the new item we can add a json file and let's name it as 
custom config.json and inside of this we can have custom config and the value is added custom config okay so now this file now if i just go ahead and try to access this here i'm not going to get anything if I just try to access this config value, it's not going to give me anything. It's going to give me empty because the system doesn't know. The auto detect, see, it just printed an empty string because the auto detect which happens in the custom default filter does not take care of this. For this, we have to do something else. So what we can do is we can do a dot and we can use this configure app configuration. Now, if we use this extension method, this gives a configuration builder delegate. So we can use this and then we can say add JSON file. And here we can specify the JSON file we wanted. In our case, it is custom config.json. So that's all we need to do. Now, if we do that, this time when we run the application, we should be able to see the value printing out in the console. And we see that edit custom config is printed here. Now, the last thing that I wanted to show is how we can overwrite some of the config using arguments. So let's say we want to override this configuration, the custom config. Let's say it doesn't matter if it is custom config or if it is something in the app setting. It really doesn't matter. Let's say we want to override this version. What we can do is we can go to the properties and here in the argument, we can say dash V is 2.0 because our version was 1.0 we are changing it to 2.0 and now first what we have to do is in program here we declare a replacement dictionary and here what we can do is we can say hyphen should replace the version. That's all we are going to say. And then here we are going to say add command line. And for command line, first we are going to pass the arguments, which is coming. And then in the second parameter for the switch mappings, we are going to provide the replacement object that we created. Now when the version is printed out, instead of the value of 1.0, we should be seeing 2.0. So let's run this application now. And we can see the version number is changed to 2.0 and everything else is coming. So as you can see, this is really helpful as well as very powerful because we can use a configuration. We can use the default configuration, which is overridden by environment level configuration. And then that value is overridden by environment variable. And that also can be overridden by the arguments as we have seen here. And everything is done pretty much out of box by the configured defaults. You need to use the configure app configuration and add command line only when you are doing arguments or you have your own custom JSON file, which is very rare case when you would need something like that because most of the thing will be in appsetting.json, but this is a feature. So these are different ways configuration can be used and you can see how powerful it is. And some of the features like directly configuring an object from a section and putting it into dependency injection is really really powerful and useful so that is all i wanted to cover today if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you have been following my channel and you are getting value out of my channel but not yet subscribed please subscribe to my channel thanks so much for watching this video